Today I'm going to do a home inspection on a 1981 property. So this video isn't too crazy long. I'm only going to focus on the five major components of the structure. The roof, the foundation, the HVAC, the electrical, and the plumbing. We're going to go see if we find anything major and help better educate the home buyer on this process. Let's go check it out. Please take the time and hit that like button. And that helps out the YouTube algorithm for us so we can continue to grow the channel. So right here I like to position my ladder where I can safely get on and off the roof. Yes, the ladder could go up a few rungs here, but I actually can step off and head this way. One of the first things I notice on the roof is right here. Uh, let's see if you follow the laser pointer right here. It looks like there's a little bit of pitting, so I'm going to make sure I walk in this area to make sure that it's firm. Also, if you are looking at purchasing this ladder, it is on our tool list at homeiw.com, and you can purchase it off of Amazon, and they'll ship it right to your door. The first thing you're going to notice stepping up here is where you have hardy plank, and if the hardy plank continues where the roof line stops, kick out flashing is supposed to be right here to divert water into the gutter and keep it off the wall. You'll be you'll pretty much call this out all the time as a home inspector they didn't recently update it into the code until 2018 but it's been a requirement of hardy manufacturers or fiber cement manufacturers for a very long time the next thing i notice on this roof is the mortar cap you're going to call this out or you're going to see this a lot on older properties you do want to reseal these to prevent any type of water penetration into the property next item are these rubber boots here a lot of the times it is recommended, especially in Texas, to replace these every five to seven years. They become brittle. Our main goal as a home inspector is to determine if this is performing or not. As of right now, it is performing. You just need a little bit of sealant around the fastener. But this is something that will educate them on that this is prone to failure in the near future. Next call out are these flues. You can see that the flue is a little bit of ru rusted here and uh, the flashing is rusted and deteriorated. It is recommended to replace this as soon as you financially can or as soon as you can. And this, the next flashing piece is right here. I see this pretty often where they terminate a flue through the bonnet vent. As a home inspector, you're also not a code inspector, but you're a performance inspector, right? We will call this out as wrong, but we'll look in the attic area to see if it is failing. But one thing that I notice here, it is, it's vibrating. So whenever you have a vibrating flue like this, typically that means that the blower motor on the inside furnace is out of balance. When walking on a roof like this, this one is a little bit steeper than others. Just be careful and then line yourself up if you started slipping, if you hit like granule loss or something like that and you slip, you're gonna run into something. Yes, you might damage the roof if you fall, but it, a roof you can repair your body, it's a lot harder to repair. So just be careful when you're up high like this. One of the next items on the roof here is you can see that the, the uh, you had old satellite dish covers here. It's actually not a bad idea to leave the old ones in because they are penetration points, but you need to, act, you need to make sure that they're sealed up to prevent future water penetration. And you want to refresh the sealant too. You can see that this sealant is a little bit old and this is an easy area to get a water leak on your structure. So uh, definitely areas to watch out for. Overall opinion of the roof structure here. Yes, we do have to recommend for a roofer because the state requires us to, but Overall, it is not in terrible condition. I'd say maybe about $1,500 worth of repairs and this roof will be tip top shape. As of right now, um, we'll look on the inside. I believe Tyler already did and we don't see any immediate water penetration or water damage. So I'd say this is on the low area of things to worry about whenever you're purchasing this property. The next step is let's go ahead and try to look at this foundation. The best way to do this, just look for, looking for signs first, we're not going to shoot any levels or anything like that, is what we're going to do is look around the exterior of the structure. And as we look around the exterior of the structure, we're going to look for cracks, separation in the exterior veneer, and any other little signs that you're going to end up calling out as a home inspector. But our main focus right now is, is the structure keeping water out, and then also is the foundation performing. So first step is, is we're going to look down the brick line. Does the brick line look straight? This is a, one of the first steps to 
to start looking at a foundation and as of right now it does look pretty straight the next thing is, is you can look around the concrete out the on around the outside to see if there's been any prior repairs or we don't have any freshly disturbed soil so right now there's no evidence of prior repair on the structure one of the first items with the foundation is we have a crack here through the slab does this is this an indication of failure but no should send off your spidey senses to be like hey we might have something to go on here just one crack does not indicate a post tension slab failure this is just an one sign that there might be some sort of settlement going on another reason why i don't think anything is going on with that crack is here you can see there is no separation between the side wall veneer and the windows either. So all the penetrations are flush and the brick line is pretty straight. So that, co that crack is purely cosmetic. The freeze board here is not separated. Everything's flush. So there is no signs of movement right here on this side of the structure. Another reason to lead, lead me to believe that that crack over there is nothing. Other items that you're going to call out pretty often is mortar improvement around the structure. You're just required to call out any prior repairs. Does this mean that it's bad? No, we're just educating the client on the property they're purchasing. This item right here will always been, be written up by termite inspectors. Whenever you have a termite infestation, it's always gonna be in this ivy right here. If you like it, that is perfectly fine. You just wanna treat the areas where they're in contact. This is a perfect environment for wood destroying insects. While we're talking about termites, the first place to look for termites or the best place to look is inside the garage, exposed two by fours. Extremely hard to spot sometimes you look for the smallest mud shelter tube and right here we found some behind some storage in the garage. This property had no evidence of prior treatment but they have evidence of termites. We didn't find any active termites today but it is recommended to treat the area even though we didn't see any active bugs. So first off let's see why they chose this location like I say all the time. So you want to check out the grading. You know, it's a little marginal over here. Then you have wood to ground contact, and then there's no way to discover that they're there. So this is a perfect area for termites to sit and not be bothered for, for multiple years. I know it's Christmas time, but we'll still write this up. You don't want permanent use of an extension cords. I know they'll probably clean this up before they move, but this is something that will still need to make it in your report. So this is a matter of code now, but you can see right here that I recommend for kickout flashing and here's why. You can see the water line running in behind the gutter. The gutter is now not properly sloped and it's leaning towards the structure. So this is an area that can cause water penetration. During brick siding, it does shed the water more than normal, but I have seen water make it in through those through brick veneer. So do recommend to add in kickout flashing in these areas. The next item to call out is from sidewall veneer and any type of trim or fiber cement board, it is, requires a two inch gap. This is a pretty common call out on older structures. Same thing here, you can see the two inches is required. You don't want fiber cement board or wood directly in contact with the roof. It invites rot to the structure. And again, kick out flashing. You can see the gutters underperforming in this location. So swinging out wide on this structure, again, the grading and draining looks good. We don't see any other signs of significant movement on the property. And then look, we have another crack right here through the slab. So I know younger inspectors, they'll call this out saying that there needs to be a structural engineer. But one thing you need to know is the power of your words and how much money this is going to cause the client. You want to really make sure that this foundation has experienced significant movement before you call out a structural engineer just for a crack. So I would say that this is normal settlement for a 1981 property. No signs of structural failure. Now we walked around the structure. So far the foundation seems okay. We're going to talk about the condenser on the outside. The very first thing I like to see on a 1981 property is a brand new condenser. Oh, I'm not brand new, but newer condenser, especially a train condenser. This, these things are amazing. So let's uh, read the label together real quick. So it's fairly new. We have a 2018 five ton unit. So this is a, a brand new unit. So we, the biggest thing is with this unit, as a home inspector, you wanna make sure that this unit matches the inside coils in the attic space. It's very often that we find that they don't and they've only replaced half of it and that goes against manufacturer specifications. 
running around the outside. If you ever see any type of algae or green moss-like features around any type of plumbing, that means that this is leaking. And this is a fantastic find as a home inspector because you know how much we charge and then we, you also know how much a plumber charge. Just this call out alone can save them the whole price of the inspection. And it's always good to look at the roof, do one wide pass, look at the roof from the ground level. You can see that these rubber boots are starting to to warp and deteriorate because of the sun and UV damage. Easy area for wind driven rains and water leaks in these locations. The next item is the panel box in the garage area. We weren't able to open it up because there's lack of clearance. You want 36 inches of clearance in front of every panel box. One of the first things I noticed with the furnace is there's not reasonable access to get to it. As a home inspector going to ride it up, are they going to be able to do anything? No, but we just want to inform the homeowner what they're getting into. So entering the attic space, we have a furnace and then we have the coils here to the right. And then right here with the furnace, a lot of the things that I realize is you have a lot of clues, you would say. You have, you have new electrical wires, you have new control components over here. There is a lot, a lot of pieces of the heat exchanger underneath. And then also the flue pipe is open to the attic space so you have a lot of daylight but the camera's not picking it up but there's evidence of water lines running off of the flue too as well uh, coming in here what you want to do is try to look into the heat exchanger area and you're getting a lot of rust so we were going to actually end up having to write this up as the heat exchanger is questionable a lot to do with the off balance mo the off balance motor the rust on the heat exchanger so we just want to make this further further evaluated and checked out, especially since it's 1996. It's unlikely that this thing is performing 100%. Next item is in the attic space. So we got 2018 coils too as well, and they appear to be matching, which is really nice. So the coils have been updated. The refrigeration line is insulated. The secondary drain line terminates into the pan. The pan drain line goes outside and then there's also a float switch too as well. So that's really nice. With the coils we're also going to open up in the attic space and I always like to just do a quick look. You'll see how clean they are and are they performing. They're only two years old so there's a little, little debris in there but not even enough to worry about writing up. Uh, the, these coils look pretty clean. Pretty nice. Trying to evaluate your plumbing the best place to start is the water heater so you want to look at your water heater and you right here you can determine the type of pipes you have we have copper plumbing and then right here with the copper plumbing you can see there's no dielectric unions on the, the copper fittings here so you do need dielectric unions where copper touches galvanize what happens is if you don't have that electrolysis starts to happen throughout your pipes and you can start to see that is happening right here with the heavy corrosion in several locations throughout the piping. So this is something that needs to be taken care of pretty much immediately to prevent that from getting worse. And you kind of do an, a general overview of the tank. The TMP goes outside, the pan goes outside, the pan's clean of debris, and then we have a 2009 50 gallon water heater. So it's about 11 years old, still within its menu, you know, performance area i'd say anything a little bit over 15 years you want to start to get worried about so right here uh, we do need some work with the plumbing but it is nice that it is copper and yeah so that's just a quick overview of the plumbing the next thing too is with the plumbing uh, we followed them along the attic areas and you don't have that electrolysis traveling through the entire structure. You know, that heavy corrosion isn't there. One more quick find while we're in the attic space. You know how I was talking about the chimney and the flashing a little bit. You can see here that the flashing's leaking and there's vis visible evidence of rot and wood deterioration. So it actually was pretty solid up there, but we do know we have some roof leaks back here behind the chimney. And this is one of your most common areas, especially if you're a home inspector, you want to be looking behind your chimneys. This is the easiest spot for water to get in. 
Okay, let's break it down. Remember, it's a 1981 property and there are gonna be things wrong with it. Something's always going to break. It's just a matter of what. This property was actually taken care of really well. You saw they upgraded the windows. You have a newer roof, clean on the inside. The exterior is more or less taken care of. The grading looks really well. So you can tell these are good homeowners. So what needs to be repaired? You know, let's let's cover some of the major stuff. The foundation, it looked good. You know, it had some nor normal little settlement, not a big issue it looks fine roof covering well the biggest thing is is yes it is leaking so it is something that we want to take care of right away so moving on to the topic of water back to the plumbing issues so we do have some electrolysis happening and a lot of people underestimate like how expensive that can get so we do want to take care of that right away get a plumber out put on some dielectric unions on that copper plumbing moving on to the electrical section this is something that kind of bothers us a little bit. We really can't open up the panel box. So what I did is I offered to let them know I'll come back. No additional charge for this one. The main reason why I offered that was because it's just right down the street. It's only 12 or 13 minutes down the road and it won't take too long to knock out a panel box. So we do definitely want to try to look at that. So moving on to the HVAC system. Yes, the outside condenser and coils have been replaced, which is really nice. But the biggest thing that bothers me is the heat exchanger in that unit. Whenever you do your heat exchanger starts to rust out like that, it can emit CO through the entire structure. So we definitely want someone to come in and verify that that heat exchanger is okay. With it being 1992 and all the extra spare parts and pieces of the heat exchanger out on the outside, resting on the floor there, is it gonna be performing? very unlikely. So I'm going to move that up to item number one. Then we have the roof leak number two. And then of course we did find active termites, which we find all the time in Houston. We want to get those treated. So that would be item number three. All the other items, I would say it's going to be like that on every single structure. So we want to make sure that they're aware of them, that they do need to be taken care of. But is it really that bad? No, you know, we want to make sure that the property is livable and it's shedding water like it's supposed to and there's no harm going to come to the family while they're living there. That's the main goal as a home inspector. So that was a little bit longer than normal breakdown, but I just really wanted to talk about those items so you understand how to look at it from an investment point of view. It won't be a perfect property, but it's a property that you can purchase and move forward with. So that's with Chris with the action. If you like these type of videos, please hit the like button and subscribe and catch us on the next one. Thanks guys. Bye. Actually what I'm most upset about is I washed my truck yesterday and I ran through a bunch of mud getting over here. Road construction.